so if you see the approach and you see this flowchart this flowchart outlines the diagnostic approach of the fever of unknown origin in patients who have had a fever of more than 38.3 degrees centigrade which is lasting for more than or equal to 3 weeks without an identified cause in an immunocompetent individual right so no known immunocompromised patients how is the workup that you need to do step by step explanation if you see the initial evaluation you need to conduct a detailed history and physical examination and next important is stop antibiotics and glucocorticoids as they mask the infection and the inflammatory conditions okay whenever you are working up of a patient with fuo stop antibiotics and glucocorticoids and what are the obligatory investigations that you should definitely do you need to perform basic and advanced blood tests right basic and advanced blood test and these blood counts include like the hemoglobin platelet count and leukocyte count then we have the metabolic markers these metabolic markers they include the electrolytes then we have creatinine total protein liver enzymes like ast alt and ldh and then creatinine kinase then we have the autoimmune markers like anti nuclear antibodies and rheumatoid factor then the microbiological tests and what are these microbiological tests that includes the urine analysis blood culture and then urine culture imaging like chest x ray abdominal ultrasound and the tuberculosis screening that is tuberculosis skin test or the interferon gamma release assay so this is the tuberculosis screen so these are the obligatory tests that should definitely be done and at the same time you should rule out the external factors like thermometer manipulation that becomes a fraudulent fever and you should also consider the drug fever so you should stop or replace the suspected medications right then you need to do the pdc that is pathological diagnostic clues okay so stop and replace the medication to exclude the drug fever then pdc what is this pdc pathological diagnostic clues if pathological diagnostic clues are present right then you need to perform guided diagnostic tests and this guided diagnostic test will lead to diagnosis or there will be no diagnosis right so if pathological diagnostic clues are present you need to perform guided diagnostic test that leads to diagnosis or no diagnosis and if pathological diagnostic clues are absent or misleading then the additional testing is required right that additional testing is required and these additional tests which are needed are you need to check for the cryoglobulin level right check for cryoglobulinemia and at the same time you need to perform the endoscopy and you also need to perform the fdg pet ct labeled leukocyte scintigraphy or the gallium scan that is what you need to do if the pdcs are absent or misleading the additional tests are needed then what are the advanced imaging test and biopsies the advanced imaging and biopsies based on finding so if scintigraphy is abnormal you need to perform right you need to perform the biopsy or culture of the identified abnormality and if the scintigraphy is normal right if the scintigraphy is normal then you need to repeat the history and physical examination should be done and if the scintigraphy is abnormal then you need to perform the biopsy right or you need to do the culture and that will give you the diagnosis if diagnosis is confirmed treat accordingly if no diagnosis is reached then you need to continue with the further investigations if suppose if the scintigraphy is normal repeat the history and examination right you need to repeat the history and physical examination and you need to perform the pathological diagnostic clues right if the scintigraphy is normal repeat the history and examination and consider pathological diagnostic clues driven invasive testing right now if suppose if you are able to get the diagnosis treat accordingly but if there is no diagnosis and if the patient age is more than 55 years 
then you need to perform the chest and as well as abdominal CT and as well as the temporal artery biopsy. And the final step is that if the patient remains stable, right, by doing this chest abdominal CT and temporal artery biopsy, if you're able to get the diagnosis, well and good. If the diagnosis is not made and if the patient remains stable, then you need to ask him for the follow-up for new pathological diagnostic clues and then you need to consider the NSI treatment. And if the patient is deteriorating, then you need to perform further diagnostic test or you need to consider a therapeutic trial. So this is about how you need to work up a patient with the FUO. So to quickly recap the approach, the first important step is conduct a detailed history and physical examination. And at the same time, stop the antibiotics and glucocorticoids because they can mask the infection and inflammatory conditions. The obligatory test that you should definitely do is inflammatory markers like ESR, CRP, blood counts like hemoglobin, platelet count and leukocyte count, metabolic markers like electrolytes, creatinine, total protein, liver enzymes, creatinine kinase, the autoimmune markers such as anti-nuclear antibody and rheumatoid factor, microbiological tests like urine analysis, blood culture, urine culture, and imaging like chest X-ray and abdominal ultrasound, tuberculin skin testing or the interferon gamma release assay, and then you need to rule out the external factors. You need to exclude the thermometer manipulation. And you need to consider the drug fever, right? So stop or replace the suspected medications, right? And you need to extract the pathological diagnostic clues. If PDC are present, then perform guided diagnostic tests that will lead to diagnosis or no diagnosis. And if PDCs are absent or misleading, then the additional tests are needed and you need to check for cryoglobulinemia and perform fundoscopy. If you are not getting diagnosis, perform FDG PET CT, label leukocytes integraphy or gallium scan, then advanced imaging and biopsy based on the finding. And advanced imaging and biopsy, if scintigraphy is abnormal, you need to perform biopsy or culture of the identified abnormality. If diagnosis is confirmed, treat accordingly. If no diagnosis is reached, then continue further investigations. And if scintigraphy is normal, you need to repeat the history and examination and you need to consider pathological diagnostic clue driven invasive testing. And if the patient's age is more than or equal to 55 years, you need to perform chest and abdominal CT and you need to treat or you need to do a temporal artery biopsy to rule out giant cell arthritis. So the final steps is that if the patient remains stable, right, if the patient remains stable, follow up for new pathological diagnostic clues and you need to consider NSI treatment. And if the patient deteriorates, then perform further diagnostic tests or consider a therapeutic trial. So the important takeaway points is the FUO requires the stepwise evaluation with history, blood test, imaging and biopsy. And pathological diagnostic clues play a crucial role in guiding the diagnosis. And this FDG PET CT and biopsy, they are very much essential in unexplained cases. And management includes the follow-up or empirical treatment if no diagnosis is reached. Right? So this is about how you need to work up a patient with the fever of the unknown origin.